The colour you choose when you decide to dry brush is really important. So for example on this little tester I've made that is covered with blue, if I want the interest to remain towards the middle of the work, then my colour choice to make this really glow would be the secondary or the complementary colour to blue. So we're going to place some orange through here and then to also highlight the texture but make it recede, we're going to choose colours that are harmonious to the blue where we don't want such contrast. The use of transparent colours for dry brushing is not advised because Transparent colours disappear into the background colour uh, when they're dry, so we need to use opaque colour. If you've got colour that is uh, too runny, then all you have to do is add a little bit of uh, thick medium to roughly half and half the thick medium. That's a beautiful cobalt orange in the free flow. But by adding the thick medium, I've made it the same consistency as paint out of uh, the Atelier uh, Interactive range, straight from the tube. And I'm going to use that gorgeous orange, which is complementary to blue, in the part of the painting where I want the viewer to be concentrating. So I've dry brushed that area. Now I'm just going to run a little bit across the top of this texture. And you can see how already have just the use of that complementary colour has brought the viewer's interest right into the middle of the work. Anytime you add a little bit of white to a transparent colour, then it's going to be uh, immediately a opaque colour. So if you only have a few little transparent colours around, all you've got to do is add white. They will immediately become a opaque colour for use in dry brushing. So I can just run my palette knife straight over the top of that texture. The usual rule of thumb in dry brushing is to use, uh, in an area of texture that's dark, you go for a lighter tone. In an area of texture that is light, you go for a darker tone. So I'm just going to run a bit of this lighter blue through here and then some darker blue. So just by dry brushing the area of texture that I've created, I've told the viewer where I want them to go. If you're not thinking of colour, tone is also very important. So if you have a larger work here, where the texture has been incorporated into this painting solely to bring an aerial perspective feeling of this area of the foreground being closer to the viewer, it was very important to highlight the texture with colours that were harmonious to the edges but higher in tone where I wanted the viewer to come in. So my choice of colour in dry brushing here makes the viewer come in and begin their journey through, through the landscape. If I'd put these lighter tones out here, you can see how a lighter tone is just going to really detract the viewer from coming into the painting. So it's very important, firstly with your dry brushing, to consider your choice of colour and secondly, to consider the tone. When you're manipulating your use of dry brushing um, in, in the total work. This little work here is a good example of the use of colour in your dry brushing. To highlight the texture edges of this tea bag here, dried tea bag that has been collaged, a semini colour has been used with the palette knife and the same semini colour has picked up the texture of the collage additions here and run off into the texture of the tissue paper from the napkin. If I cover that turquoise off, everything is very hot. As soon as I put the turquoise in and run that turquoise dry brushing with a palette knife, it links all these elements and it adds drama and excitement and power to the work.